Hello everyone. This is um, this was is what I've been trying to do today at four o'clock in my uh, daily live. It didn't work. I had some problems uh, with the broadcast. There was no audio, so I'm doing this again because I want to get this out of the way. I want to share this stuff. So uh, the thing is this: what I why I started this is because I started thinking about seven billion and eight hundred million people you know i realized like i don't understand how many are these people i want to know i want to quantify these people and so i i i found out that i could do graphs on um, on my computer so i just put some data and then you got like these bars that represents the number so i started playing with it a little bit and i started putting numbers regarding this pandemic and all this stuff and it came out something very interesting and i want to share with you and today is not about for me to give an opinion i just want to give these numbers because these are the official numbers you can double check you know the numbers i'm saying and let me know if i'm saying anything uh, wrong but this is the official numbers i found the numbers that everybody agrees and the question is this do these numbers if they are what they are, justify the measures that, that have been taken. So I want to take you into this presentation and show you a little bit about a visual uh, about these numbers. So no opinion, just numbers. And I'm going to start by sharing this, this thing first. OK, so because, you know, uh, wait, I need to share my screen. Because, you know, if you really think, do you think you know people? Do you think we know the world? And, you know, when you look at this graph, these are the 7 billion, 800 million people, okay? And this small square is 5 million people, is Rome, all Rome. And this little line that I had to circle to find it is 5,000 people which is the maximum facebook friends you can have okay so this is the first graph for some reason is so I, I cannot get to see all the way down so i'm going to show you on my graph here the one i used to make this uh, this thing because it's a vector program so i can zoom in more and you see this blue line here this represents 5000 people compared to 7 billion and 800 million people why i show you this because you know i realized this okay 5000 is the maximum people you can have as friends on facebook most people have 1000 2000 people out of this 1000 2000 people you have about 100, 200 people you actually see the feeds of because you don't see all 5,000 people if you had 5,000 people. And out of these 100, 200 people, you don't really know them. You just see what they post. And then the people out of the people you actually know that you actually see every day, how many do you actually sit down and ask them, how are you, you know, what's going on for you? What do you think about this and that? And you have an actual conversation. So. If this is 5,000 people, okay, that I cannot get to uh, show you here, I need to go to the other program. And these are the 7.8 billion people. It means that you just know a very, very, very tiny little fraction of the people in the world. We don't know. There are so many ways of thinking, so many ways of living, so many different things. And we have this assumption that we know the world. We know what's going on in the world. So one thing we base the world, we perceive the world through other people. Another thing we perceive the world is, big thing is through the news. But the news, again, is not based on these 8 billion people. It's based on the little fraction of this, very, very tiny fraction of these 8 billion people that are the one who decide what to put on the news. Okay? So... This is the first graph that I want to share to just have a visual 
to understand really that we don't know the world. We don't know the people. We just think we know based on what the information received. And the information received is very limited by the number of the people you talk to, but also by the decision of the information that is being decided to put out there. So that decision is not based on the whole world. It's based on very tiny uh, people who might, I'm just saying, I don't want to say opinion today, but who might have an agenda for why they show certain things on the news. Okay, so this is the first graph. Now, moving on, I want to show you this graph. So based on what's been uh, happening, okay, in this uh, past few months in the world, I want you to guess what this graph is. So this are, I can tell you, is the 7 billion, 7.8 .8 billion people, these, these pink bars. What do you think this yellow bar is? What do you think this purple, this other uh, little tiny pink one? And this, this you can see here, is a little, I can show you on, the, on this actually program, which I can zoom in much more. Now you already see maybe, so there is this tiny gray and this tiny red line. So what do you think this is? Based on what it's, what's happening in the world, okay? I show you now what it is. So this big yellow line is how many people don't get enough to eat? 820 million people. This is the number one killer disease in the world, which is cardiovascular disease. This is the second uh, killer in the world, which is cancer. This little tiny line here is 1 million people dying from HIV. And this line, red line here, is how many people are dying from coronavirus? 900,000 people. Okay? So these are the actual numbers, the actual uh, proportion. Okay? So I show you in this, in this graph, it's not like I decide um, how big is the line. I just put the data in. Um, i show you where I cannot do it in all because I edited. I can put, oh. Just a second. I'll show you. So I put here the data. Okay, this is Italy. So I put how many people here, how many deaths and everything. And then the graphs is automatic. Okay, I don't decide how big is this line, you know, how big is this bar, just to let you know. Okay, so moving on. So this, you know, is this one of the news is <laughs> 821 million people die. Um, they don't get enough to eat in the world. So one out of nine people don't have enough to eat in the world. Okay, it's about 10% of the people. Now, I put another data here. I put how many people lost their jobs since the lockdown. Okay, so I compared how many people don't have enough to eat, is this yellow thing. How many people die from uh, uh, a combination of heart disease and cancer? It's 40 million, 40 million people every year they die from either cancer or heart disease. And this is the people who die from coronavirus, this line here, this red line here, okay, 900,000 people. But this is the people who lost their job, 195 million people. And obviously this isn't being effect affected only the people who lost their job, but also their family. So this it's, it should very much be uh, bigger. So now I put together the people who lost their job, all the other diseases, uh, the main diseases, the, the two most uh, um, uh, uh, killing diseases in the world, which is a cardiovascular disease and, and cancer, 40 million people, and coronavirus. Okay? This line is coronavirus. Now, move on. You try at home this graph or try to ask somebody to the graph. This is the actual proportion. So now I, I want to just show you how many people are currently being born and currently die. This is a live uh, statistic. It's live. If you go on, I didn't save the website, but 
uh, when I record this, it was recorded live a few days ago. So like all, every second, two or three new childs are born and every second, a couple of people die. And 57 million people and 444,000 is the people, uh, how much they grow uh, this year, how much the world population has grown this year. I just found this interesting, knowing that every second, two or three people are dying constantly. Bah, 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 bah. And the people also are being born. Bah, bah, bah. It's just an interesting uh, thing to see. Now, uh, this is all the premature death in the world. This graph is 2016, okay? And, and this one is a graph uh, which it takes you from 1990 to 2017. Okay, so we see that it, they're mostly always the same thing that people that kill people prematurely: cardiovascular disease, cancer, respiratory disease. This is the main three reasons all the way along from 1992 until this, this day. And the only thing here that changed it was like HIV. It was uh, coming up a little bit and then going down. And um, and HIV is uh, where, like I show you in other statistics, is where coronavirus also is, is, is standing at. So you got like, you know, 17 million people dying of cardiovascular disease, 9 million people have cancer, 3.4, uh, 3 or 4 million people respiratory disease, uh, re respiratory infections, dementia, all that, diabetes. Uh, then you got like tuberculosis, 1 million people die every year of tuberculosis. And right down, uh, HIV is uh, coronavirus, which is not here. Then you got malaria and homicide, and then you got suicide. Is seven thousand nine hundred people, almost as many as coronavirus every year. And I think this year it has been more. Um, so this is this is a bit, you know, a graph to have an idea of how many people die for the biggest cause uh, diseases, and this is uh, coronavirus. Now, I uh, put together how many people die of, uh, how many don't have enough people, how many people don't have enough to eat, how many people die of cardiovascular disease, cancer, uh, lower respiratory diseases, uh, HIV, and coronavirus. Now, this is interesting now. Now, I went to the World Health Organization website. I mean, I didn't go directly, but I asked what causes the two most uh, uh, killer in the in the world. So the cardiovascular disease and cancer. What causes this? Thing? What the main causes for developing cancer or, or heart uh, or re, um, circulatory disease, cardiovascular disease? And maybe I don't know if I can read it, but I don't want to spend too much time. But uh, you know, maybe you can pause it and read it. But basically, what he's saying is that the main causes for both these diseases, these killers, the top killers in the world, that is smoking, drinking alcohol, and the diet, bad diet, okay? These three causes, these three causes. Means that if you don't smoke, you don't drink, and you eat right, most likely it's not going to happen to you. But you, you heard of some people who were very healthy, they thought, or they said, and they got these things. But it's the exception that uh, confirmed the rule rather than the other way around. But anyway, just to say that this is in our hands, okay? So now I want to show you this. These are the 7.8 billion people, okay? These pink uh, lines. This yellow line is the people who don't have enough to eat, okay? These are the most uh, dangerous disease in the whole world right now is cardiovascular disease. These are all the people in the world who die from this. Second most dangerous is cancer. All the people in the world die from this. And then you go all the way down uh, from like, you know, 17 million of cardiovascular disease, 9 million of cancer. And then you go like 900,000 people dying of coronavirus, this line here. Okay. These are the people who don't have enough to eat. And now look, all these people, 1 billion people actually smoke. 2 billion people actually drink. Okay. So, so far, you know, because this, we realize that these things, we can pretty much sort it out by changing the, the diet, by changing uh, our habits, 
Uh, and then you got the third, uh, the third most uh, dangerous thing, which is the respiratory disease, which is mainly caused again from smoking and uh, um, and breathing uh, shit that that uh, you know like cars and um, and in and uh, factories. So basically, what I want to say with this graph is this: that this is in our hands, okay? Besides the all the chemicals and all the stuff, that's why you know a lot of other uh, shit happens but mostly mainly we can tell that this is on our hands okay and so and so far so good all these people don't have enough to eat all these people die and and it's we know why and we know how to change it but it's okay until now so far so good but because this happens this little line here which i'm going to speak about more in detail in a second then the whole world changed okay but today is not a day for opinions it's just a day for numbers so i'm going to continue with the numbers now i'm going to move to italy where i am right now and i want to show you some statistics from italy so we are 60 million people this is represented by this pink bar and 35,000 corona death which is this red line here okay compared to this pink bar but one more thing i want to say about this now it's interesting out of this uh, 30, 35,000, which is also actually the same thing for the whole world, but uh, just for Italy, I want to say this, 35,000 people uh, died from coronavirus, but out of this uh, 35,000 uh, people, only 1% was above uh, between 50 and 59, 10% between 60 and 69, 31% between 70 and 79, 44% be between 80 and 89, 14% over 90. And under 50, it has been really basically nothing, okay? Now, in Italy, again, it's like all over the world, the major cause of death, of premature death, is uh, uh, cardiovascular disease, uh, cancer, uh, respiratory disease, okay? This is the three top, and then you got some, uh, some, other, um, some other cause of death. But for now, I just I compare these three causes, you know, with coronavirus, okay? So... Uh, cardiovascular disease, 100,000, uh, uh, 180,000 uh, cancer, 53,000 uh, respiratory uh, diseases, and 35,000 corona. Now, I added how many people lost their job in Italy since the lockdown. 3.7 million people. Compared to coronavirus, 35,000 people, but out of these 35,000 people, actually 90% of them, they were over 70. Okay, and all these people lost their job, but this did not affect only them, it affected also their family who were counting on them. Uh, so I compare now all the people in Italy, 60 million, how many people lost their job and the coronavirus, and this, it's all the death from coronavirus without counting them, 90% of them, they're over 70. And now I did something even more visual that I think you're gonna enjoy, so I consider um, consider the, a world uh, a world being in this, in this stadium. Okay, seventy thousand people is the Olympic Stadium, and it looks like this. This is what seventy thousand people look like. This would be maybe more, a bit more, seventy five thousand, because it's really full. But this is what it looks like. Okay, seventy thousand people, and I show you why I show you this now. So 70,000 people is uh, a whole stadium full. So now, based on this information that I'm going to show you now, so that the world population is 7.2 billion. Actually, this, I made a mistake here, is 7.8. Uh, but the corona death are 900,000. I did not make a mistake here. The 900,000 death, uh, so it's 0.0115% of death rate. Cancer and heart disease kills 25 million together and is at 0.32 death rate. And then people who, who, who don't have enough to eat is 821 million people. is 10% of the world population. In Italy, is actually the death rate of, for coronavirus is 0.058. is a bit more from respect to the world. And cancer and heart disease is 0.68%. Uh, so based on these numbers, I thought... Okay, what if the world was a stadium? What if the world was a stadium? You were in the stadium 
how many people would die from cancer or heart disease in this stadium based on the numbers? 224 people. How many people would die from coronavirus based on the numbers? Eight people. Out of all these 70,000 people, eight people would die from coronavirus. But seven of them, out of these eight people, there would be over 70. If we were in Italy, if the whole Italy was represented in the stadium full of 70,000 people, then 467 people would die of cancer and heart disease, and 40 people would die from coronavirus. But out of these 40 people, 35 people would be older than 70 years old. So I did here a representation of, you know, the stadiums here, just to have a, an understanding of how many people are 17 million people. So 17 million people die of uh, cardiovascular disease means every year, 242 full stadiums of people die from cardiovascular disease. 114 full stadium of people die of cancer and 13 full stadiums of people have died of coronavirus. Okay, coronavirus, cancer, cardiovascular disease. In Italy, it's, um, it's actually 3.5 stadiums who die from cardiovascular disease, 2.5 from cancer, and half a stadium from coronavirus. Now, based on all these numbers, all these statistics, I want to look at the measures that have been, that have been taken. Okay? Are you still with me? Let me see if I'm still live. Yeah, it looks like I'm still live. Okay, so based on the statistics, this is what's, what's been happening. The whole world under house arrest, the whole world having to wearing a face mask on the, on the um, public places, the whole world, of course, uh, had to use all this uh, sanitizer uh, shit here. Oh, sorry, no opinion today. The world economy shut down, so millions of people lost their job, entire industry completely were wiped out. And children who had nothing to do with all this, zero children actually was affected by the actual virus, but now they go back to school and they have to wear face masks, they have to do social distancing, and this is, this is a little bit what I found on the internet, some picture. This represents, you know, it's going to be very familiar to you. It's nothing strange now to see something like this. So a whole line of people with a mask and uh, a person pointing a gun at your head to check your temperature. Uh, children have to go like this, eating alone. And yeah, this is some attempt to, to do the social distancing. All these uh, separators and, you know, child, children have to eat alone like this. This is uh, doing exercise outside, but keeping the social distancing, social distancing here. And this, you know, child who says, let's go play outside, but you don't go outside this box I draw for you. Okay, these are the measurements that have been taken, the measures that have been taken. Because of this, 7.8 billion people and this line is how many people died from actually this disease, okay? This yellow line is how many people don't have enough to eat. Okay, until now, nothing major we, we have done for these people. I mean, there are a lot of people who are trying to do a lot of things, but as far as the government of rules, imposing rules, like, man, you know what? I am going to uh, take, you know, whatever money from the taxes or for whatever, and we're going to solve world hunger, okay? And I think, you know, everybody would be okay with that. But no, this one is okay. But because of this, because of this many people have this disease, then the whole world uh, had to do uh, these things I just show you. But again, not opinion, just numbers. So this is other uh, statistics. Uh, you know how many? Uh, this is um, injuries, uh, non-communicable disease, and communicable disease, maternal, neonatal, and so basically. This is the, I want to find out, you know, the death rate, which is 3.1%. So basically, out of 29,722,000 coronavirus cases, you have 900,000 deaths. And so 21,500,000 actually recovered. This means that 3 is the death rate of 3%, okay, this disease. Now, I show you the last image, the last graph, which I found very interesting. This is from October 2014. 
and it shows all the um, all the infect infectious disease and it showed two measures here one is the percentage the death rate okay the more you go up the for example here uh, rabies if you have it 100% of people if it's untreated it will die basically okay then you have you know um, for example chickenpox okay no zero all, almost 0% zero of people die from chickenpox which actually some people do die from chickenpox then you got seasonal flu here 0.1% Lyme disease swine flu so basically it as it depends how how i how high it is is uh, the death rate and and how uh, much is, is here on the right is the um, uh, how much is infectious okay so the infectious number is called ro which is uh, stands for reproduction number so if you hear for example malaria is highly contagious they say here for this graph and i don't know this salmonella is less contagious so based on these two uh, data i put coronavirus in this in this graph because i know that this three percent death rate and i know i i found out that it's around a bit higher than one percent one the number one of uh, ro okay so as you see here is E. coli, SARS, cholera, HIV treated, then you got HIV here, I'm treated, Ebola, tuberculosis, which is killing, you know, uh, I think more than 1 million, I think 2 million people every year, polio, smallpox, so fever, dengue, all the things are here, and coronavirus is here. It's not here, it's not anything crazy based on this graph, it's just here. You know, all these diseases, they've always been here. They, they probably be here. Some of them will change. Some new one will come. Some old one will go. But I don't see anything like crazy me. I don't see that. And th this was it. Okay. So again, today I didn't want to give much of opinions. I just wanted to share these numbers just because I was going crazy. And I thought, Maybe I'm crazy. So let, let me share these numbers with people and see what they think. So I don't know what you think, because now my, this is my question now. If you think that the measures that they have been taken, the safety measures, security measures, they have been taken, shutting down the whole world economy, having children living like that, and, and all that has been done is justified by these numbers I just show you, then, okay, fine. I don't want to argue. I just, you know, I want to give you this number. But if you don't think it's justified, the question is then what to do? Because, you know, if you trust the people that govern us, because what's happening now is like, because it's, it became war zone, because it's, it's now, is um, what is that called? Basically, they're making laws out of like this because it's an emergency. It's emergency state. So we can make laws like this. We can decide what you what people should do okay so that's that's what they're doing so now if you trust these people then your leaders and you trust that they're doing the best for you and your children your family then it's okay but what if you don't trust what if you 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 been asked to do something that you think that go against your health against the health of your family what to do this is my question so my answer to that is I'm going to start saying no. If I see that there is something that goes, that is not in my value, that I think is going to harm me or harm my, uh, my family, I'm just going to start saying no. This is the answer that I, I think uh, I will give you. Now I want to ask you, what's yours? Because, you know, it's been happening in the history that... Uh, People whose ruling was being, uh, there have been dictatorship, there have been uh, slavery. There have been all these things which if people would do nothing about, it would be continuing, right? So now it's happening something that if nobody does something about, it's going to be continuing. If you're okay with what's, gonna, what's going on, fine. 
if you're not okay with what's going on, then what to do? This is the question. And, uh, and, and I hope you enjoyed this little presentation and you can share with the people if you want to uh, kind of show some visuals of what maybe intuitively you already know, you already realized, but these are some visuals that you can kind of argue with uh, when you're speaking to people who maybe don't think what you think. Okay, the, this was it. I'm glad I did this finally and uh, I'll see you on the next video. Bye-bye.